sometimes when you see photographs posted on Facebook and you look at them and you think, do you know what, that's an amazing photograph. How does the photographer achieve such things? You have to realise there is a lot of stuff goes on after the image is taken. Not always, because occasionally you'll get the perfect light, you'll have the perfect filter on, the perfect exposure and the perfect composition. But that just isn't reality in a good 75% of cases. Here's an example. This is a shot I took uh, took a while back. I think it was in I think it was in approximately oh, well, a year or so ago anyway. And it's uh, just outside Alamouth. And it was a hill I saw as I was driving along. And um, I was very impressed with it, but I didn't have the weather. The, the sun just was behind this cloud here. And, uh, you know, the clouds were nice, but they weren't brilliant. But I just love all of the hay bales, uh, hay rolls, as they are now. So, we need to do something with a photograph. Yes, I could bin it, of course I could, but um, I'd rather it ended up like that. I'm going to show you roughly how to do it. So the first thing to do is adjust the balances here. You'll notice the sky is quite bright. So in Lightroom, this is uh, Lightroom CC, I'm going to just get the balance a little bit better. So I, I think we'll first of all do the sky. So I'm drawing a, a mask down here, um, like so. Uh, sorry, just let me just get it flat. So that's what it is. So what we need to do is maybe drop the exposure a little bit, maybe to about that. Um, I think we'll boost the blues a little, make it a bit of a bluer sky. And yeah, I think that's okay. Maybe drop the highlights a bit. So here's a little bit burnt out, but if we drop the highlights just a little bit, you've got a more balanced sky. So okay, that's fine. So now we've got the bottom, but it's very dull. So what can we do with that? So again, we're going to use this um, graduated mask here, and we're going to pull up this time. Now, by pulling up, we're changing the way this works. Uh, if I hover over the dot, you can see the area that's uh, just been highlighted there is everything that's going to be affected by what I'm going to do. So, the first thing I'm going to do is bring these uh, shadows up. And as you can see straight away, I can affect how light or dark the bottom is. And I'm going to bring them up quite high. Uh, I've got to also have a look, because if you look along the skyline, this is a mistake a lot of people make. The skyline here has got what we call a bit of ghosting. So I'm going to make the graduation a bit more gentle and maybe bring it down just a touch there and that's removed uh, the majority of the ghosting. Now it's quite realistic that the ones on the top here, if they're not in direct sunlight, they're definitely going to be in shadow. So here we go, so that's that. Now uh, this is a little bit dull still so the other thing you can do is just pull the whites up very slightly and also warm it up a little bit. So here we go. So I'm going to warm it up by going to the temperature control by about that much. And I think that will do for now. So we've got a, a better image, okay, than it was. So what we're going to now look at is maybe we need to break this up a bit. We need to put some sunlight, I think, in this. So I use this circular tool here. Uh, which draws basically patches. Now I've got something set up called sunlight pools. So if I just give you an example, so I just bang this in the middle here and we put the exposure up to about there maybe. We put the whites up a bit to make it quite bright and then we actually make it quite warm like so. Then I change the feathering very slight to make it a bit softer and I do done. Can you see now we have a a sunlight or a pretend sunlight shining on the cut uh, hay here. Uh, now obviously we can move that around anywhere we like, we can put it further up here, down here, anywhere we like, but clearly in the real world you'd have quite a few of these, so let's just put one here, make it quite long perhaps, probably to about there, maybe even a little bit lower again, to about there. Okay, now we're gonna, by right clicking on that dot, we can duplicate it. So the same settings, we're now going to put it somewhere else. Let's put it there perhaps, but let's make it a bit a bit shorter. And maybe we'll make that one just a little bit brighter. Like so. Okay. 
and maybe we warm it up just a touch more like so okay great stuff um, I think in fact I'm going to bring the highlights up as well on that one so they're slightly different so that's okay that's good I'm going to duplicate it again now we need one down up the back here now obviously that's going to be far too large so let's make it a bit narrower let's have a narrow beam now we've got to be careful where you place these so it looks as, as natural as you can sorry that's my Facebook messaging beeping away uh, I'm probably happy there but that's obviously we don't like the sky so let's make that quite narrow let's have it about there and we're gonna to have to make the feathering a little bit more so it's not so sharp so let's take it to about 79 that's good okay I think we need one more maybe two more so we'll duplicate again move this one to here perhaps now I'm, I'm I'm exaggerating this quite a lot here because I'm trying to show you a technique. Let's have them overlapping a little so there's a little bit of shadow in between. Um, let's make that just a slight bit smaller because things further away are smaller according to Father Ted. And very finally, final one, let's just duplicate the same one there, duplicate. And we're going to move this one up here to probably about there. But what we are going to do is make that quite narrow and pop that probably about there and this is far too long I think we shortened it to about there okay right so now as you can see we've got sort of graduated light all over the image so what else can we do in um, in Lightroom itself Let's have a look at the contrast. How does the contrast? Now, bringing the contrast up is, makes it a little bit uh, artificial. I know it's artificial, but we don't want it to show um, it to be artificial. So maybe let's have a look at the clarity, which is basically the middle contrast. Now, there we go. I think that's quite nice there. The clarity has brought up the images here. It's defined the edge of the horizon. And I think this still looks a little bit uh, not colourful enough for me. So let's have a look at the vibrance here. The vibrance we can boost obviously we don't want to go too much we see too many photographs like that on Facebook thank you very much so uh, let's go to there and, and just a touch of saturation maybe five or four uh, about there that's so look that's a good basis so I'm gonna now bring this over into um, into Photoshop so just going to export it now I'm only going to export it as a small file I normally go 16 bit which means it's a really big file to deal with but I'm not going to produce this for print this is just to demonstrate and a smaller image is easier to work with so let's export that um, obviously I've done one before because I've posted it onto the hidden Northumberland page which is a brilliant page if you want to go and have a look at it and there we go so let's have a look at the before and after so that's the before this is the same image and that's after can you see immediately we've got that now there's one final thing I like doing um, and it's a filter set by Google believe it or not uh, and it's Nick software uh, bought by Google so let's go to filter and show you the Nick collection it's something called color effects pro 4 now the whole suite which has got some great filters in um, is well it's it's around about nine nine dollars um, I got mine quite some time ago so let me show you what this can do one of the things I really like is something called pro contrast yeah pro con pro contrast and you've got something called dynamic contrast here so if we bang I'll over exaggerate it you can see it's very high contrast but very specific so by using this in moderation you now let's see so that's before and that's after you can see it's just bringing that out nicely. You've got to be careful it doesn't blow highlights out and this is why you've got a little highlight slider here that you can just tweak a little bit which I, I like doing. Uh, the other thing you can do is add a filter to that one. Now there's something I also like using called brilliance and warmth. Um, always set to zero but we can really warm the image up or cool the image down depending. So I think I'd like to maybe put it to just again subtle, always subtle, to about there. Um, this is the mid-range saturation again I don't like that at all we'll leave that where it is and I th think the saturation is probably fine can I maybe squeeze it a little bit out okay that's good great so we're going to apply all that to this image here there's lots of other things you can do I particularly don't like the 
the hole in the cloud there um, in the one I posted just recently I actually covered that over but that's pretty much the basis of how you do it I hope this was fun uh, and I'm Paul Appleby and see you online